ever since FlatHub began rolling out its verification system, it has been very quickly adopted. Now, the whole point of the system is to indicate which flat packs are developed by the developer of the application and which are developed by a third party developer that just likes the project. For example, there are cases like OBS, Firefox, Critter, and over a thousand other applications where the flat pack on FlatHub is developed by the developer of the project. But there are also cases like Blender, Inkscape, VLC, and especially proprietary applications like Spotify, where they are listed on FlatHub because somebody likes the application and they want it to be available. Now, in the way it's supposed to be used, I think verification is a really good system. It gives users a lot more information about where they should be reporting bugs, because if you see an application is verified, you know this is an official distribution of the application I can go directly to the project developers, whereas a third-party flat pack, the developers probably aren't going to care about flat pack specific issues. Now, with this in mind, there are other ways that verification can be used. And in Linux Mint's recent monthly news, they've announced a change to their software manager and how they are going to be presenting flat packs and how they're going to be making them available. And I don't particularly agree with this change, but first, let's look objectively at what they are doing. These parts here don't matter, they're just general improvements. Unverified flat packs are disabled by default. A warning explains the security risk associated with them in the newly added preferences window. So we have this toggle here, show unverified flat packs, not recommended, turned off. Unverified flat packs represent a huge security risk. They are not officially approved by the developer of the application and could be maintained by anyone. To avoid potential malware, it is strongly recommended not to use unverified flat packs. When enabled, these flat packs are clearly marked as unverified. So we have this unverified badge here and saying unverified flat pack. Note the unverified flat packs also do not feature any reviews and do not have a score. Now I understand what Mint is trying to do here. They are trying to keep the users safe and make sure if there is malware on FlatHub, their users do not accidentally download it. Because whilst FlatHub does have human moderators, they're not checking every single update every second of the day. It's gonna take someone actually reporting something or something otherwise being flagged and in certain cases, things might not be noticed for a couple of hours, maybe a day, maybe a couple of days. And during that time, depending on how popular the application is, that could lead to a lot of people being compromised and no one wants that to happen. That is a great goal to have. But this approach does not achieve that goal. Maybe it inches you a little bit closer, but this kind of misses the point of what verification is, how it works, and what it's trying to achieve. This first sentence here under the heading, this is what verification is about. They are not officially approved by the developer of the application and could be maintained by anyone. Not the heading and not this sentence down here. And the reason for that is the way that verification works. So feel free to go and read the entire documentation yourself, but the main point is how verification is done. So the first way of verification is website verification. Basically, you have a little text file on your website in a specific location, and this is gonna have a code inside of it. And then that code is used to link your website with your FlatHub listing. And if your website is actually a website related to that project, which is gonna be checked by the human moderators, then your application is gonna be marked as verified. Obviously, if you link some random unaffiliated website, verification is not going to happen then. And another method of verification is linking the project source code repo with the FlatHub listing. So this will work if you're on GitHub, GitLab, the GNOME GitLab, or the KDE GitLab. If you're on something like SourceHeart, things like that, do the website verification. Now, there is another method, but you're not going to have it happen to you because it's a very, very special case. This is where the developers of FlatHub know the Flatpak is an official Flatpak. In cases like Firefox, for example, 
that one has been manually verified. Now, that's only going to happen in the most exceptional of exceptional cases. So, don't bank on that. Either do repo verification or website verification. And again, no matter which verification is being done, human moderation is going to play a part. So, if there are people that are trying to game the system, they are either not going to be verified or they're going to lose their verification. Only do verification if you are actually part of the project that develops the application. So doesn't that then mean if an application has been verified, the application is good? The application should be on the store? Well, not necessarily because all verification is saying is that you are the developer of the flat pack and you are the developer of the upstream project. It does not talk about the quality of the application or how safe an application is. Now, something that is obviously malware when it tries to get listed on the store, that's not going to be verified and is not going to be allowed on the store. But let's say you have a verified flat pack and one of your developer accounts is compromised and that application then gets some malware injected into it. During that process, that flat pack is still going to remain verified. Let's say that you have a situation like XZ, where there isn't a hostile takeover, but you stick around for a while, you become a trusted maintainer, and when the other maintainer steps away, then you inject malware. That application for a period is going to remain verified until someone realizes what's going on. It maybe is fair to say that there is possibly some safety benefit, maybe just a little bit, just simply due to the fact that getting a flat pack verified on Flathub is an extra step that you need to go through. But it's in no way a guarantee that a Flathub listing is free of malware. And I would say framing it like this, where unverified flat packs are a huge security risk and you can avoid potential malware by not using unverified flat packs, gives users a false sense of security of what the verification system is all about. I think a really good comparison here is the way that browsers display SSL. Right now, we're on a website that makes use of it, HTTPS. So next to the domain, we have this lock symbol, and clicking that, it says the connection is secure. And this is fine for me as a technical user that knows what this means. It means my connection is encrypted. But there are a lot of people out there they see HTTPS, they see a lock, they see a description that makes it seem like, ooh, everything is safe, and assume that means that the website they are on is safe as well. SSL says absolutely nothing of whether a site has been compromised, whether a site is a phishing site, whether you have some malicious plugin installed that is sniffing your data. All it says is your data is encrypted. But in the case of dealing with a scammer, non-technical users can very easily be tricked, and you probably know someone who thinks the lock means everything is fine here. I think a much better way to handle this is not focusing on the security aspect of it, but just focusing on the first part here where the application isn't maintained by the upstream developer, it could be maintained by anyone and giving users the information to know if they have a bug, where they should be going with that bug. I think that by itself is already useful enough information to have in your installer. The other issue I know is going to happen because it happened for Fedora is when you have a flat pack repo and you're not giving people access to Flathub, because that's effectively what's being done here. You have a filtered version of Flathub. You are going to have users that come to you that say, I can't install, for example, Blender, Inkscape, VLC, Spotify. And they're going to make a bug report and say, the software manager is broken. And you're going to say to them, well, it's not broken, change the toggle, enable unverified flat packs, and then another person says the same thing, and another person says the same thing, 
and another person says the same thing. This is exactly what happened on Fedora with Fedora flat packs. And eventually they caved and decided to fix the way they show Flathub and actually present it properly. And I have a feeling the same thing might end up happening here, especially with Mint being a lot more focused on the new users. You're going to have people that just don't understand why Flathub now seems to be broken. If you're okay dealing with that, go ahead, disable unverified flat packs by default. But I don't think that disabling them for security reasons is a good enough reason to do so and presenting it as if it is a security benefit is going to lead to some users getting hurt in the long run. But let me know what you think. Do you think it actually is a security improvement? Do you think verification actually matters in this case? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And how do you get verified on YouTube?